Hello and welcome to Numismatic Stacker. I'm your host Brian and today I want to talk about how to grade raw silver dollars. So how did this video spawn? And I'm not going to mention any names but I, I have seen a content creator um, bought a bunch of silver dollars um 1921 morgans or whatever um and then they're like thinking they're mint state but i want to show you um how to determine what the grade is uh if there's a problem with that coin and why they are put in bins like such um i think this is a really good learning tool for anybody in the future who loves morgan dollars and peace dollars So basically out of that bin I just picked out three 1921 Morgans and three Peace Dollars. Some of the best ones I have left. A lot of the good ones got picked out. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I would do the same, right? So I think someone says, you know, a coin like this, they're like, that's a Mint State 63 once I restore it. Well, I'm going to... <laughs> cue you guys in uh, that's completely false as you can see um you're seeing rub right here um and over there and over there and right here it's just it's just everywhere on both sides um yes it does have it truly does have good details to it but again you know you're not going to get a lot of money for these anyways um so that's why prices have been dropping on the silver dollars you can't restore this you cannot make this better it's already compromised. The surface has been disturbed. Um, it's going to get a details grade, um, probably, I'd say, EF details. That's right on. That's exactly what it would get. Okay. Um, this one may be a little bit better. And I'm going to show you one of these, okay? We're going to, we're going to uh, restore one of these. Um, I think this one might be the best, but as you can see the dark areas around, that's kind of terminal. And this and this is a demonstration. I want you guys to take a really good look at this coin because we're going to uh, dip this one. And when I see remnants that are kind of stuck in the fields, between the field and the device here, um, that tells me it possibly could have been cleaned at one time because those areas, it's, it's just, it's like impossible to get it out. Um, and I remember saying before that some of these hairlines, if this coin's been washed with soap and water and it doesn't get rinsed off properly, um, those, those hairlines can be absolutely invisible, kind of like a rubbing compound does on a paint job on a car. And I'm not saying it was a rubbing compound, but we'll keep this to the side. I think this is going to be a good candidate for a dip. And it's not going to hurt the value, folks. It's not going to hurt the value anyways. Um, they're already basically call prices. Um, let's see. This one's kind of has decent luster to this one. Okay. Um, I'm thinking we might dip both of these just because I don't see anything that's terminal on here. And to really tell you what I think it is, um, I'd say this is like an AU50. AU53. Let me know if you guys agree with that. This is not a Mint State 65. This is not a $700 coin. All right, let's move on. So we got a couple of peace dollars here. You can see the wear in it. It, you know, the, the, the it's got some dullness to it. You know what I'm saying? So there's no way it's going to be anywhere near like a a decent AU, like a 55 or anything like that. It could eke out a 50, but more than likely. You're looking at uh, an XF, and you can see there was once tape on here a long time ago. You can see the difference in the color from here to there. Um, and again, that's why we get these cheap, and we try and sell them cheap. Um, really good buyers, by the way. Really good sellers. Um, another one here. Here's a wiped one. You can definitely see the hairlines. There's no residue to hide it. Um, if this basically, I could do an experiment where I just wash this with soap and water and not rub it, you know, and just let the soap and all that other stuff dry on it and see if it has this sort of look to it after it dries and, and it hides those um, hairlines. 
That's a suspicion. This is a hypothesis of mine, but I've encountered this on buying rolls of circulated AU coins and then dipping them and find out that, hey, that coin is cleaned and I didn't do that, right? So again, this would probably be an EF details, okay? This one does have wear on it as well. This one, again, is probably a nice, like an EF coin, EF, extremely fine. That's about it. Um, a lot of my AU ones, I had a mint state one that had some terminal toning on it. Just, you know, it just, uh, they're gone, <laughs> okay? <laughs> one of my, some of my wonderful fans and viewers uh, purchased those, they snatched those bad boys. So I gotta pick a piece dollar, which one I wanna, which one I wanna dip, I think that one we'll try this one and see if it improves it and then i'm going to dip these two we're going to analyze that and then we're going to go through my book of raw silver dollars and we'll just call out grades as we see them okay this is the number one coin num 1921 this is what it looks like originally before i dipped the coin and now this is what it looks like now what do you guys think did i call that right about an AU, maybe. And there's some marks on there. But uh, do you see any hairlines? This one might. Let's see. Let's really look hard here. But I can see how somebody can say this could be an uncirculated coin. And they could put it in a 2x2 two two holder and say BU. When we know for a fact it's not. Um, this is probably like a 55 to a 58 possibly. Um, I do possibly see some some areas up here on the hair. Let's just really zoom in here. I really want to look at it now. Because it actually turned out better than I thought. Because when I say, you know, I see the dark areas in there, maybe it, it, is, it could be a telltale sign that it's been cleaned. But then again, it doesn't look too bad. We got lucky on this one. There's a little bit of hair on there. But yeah, not too bad. So that is uh, coin experiment number one. Now, um... This is the other 1921 Morgan originally before I dipped it. And now let's look at it now. Not too bad, but I'm starting to see a little bit of hairlines possibly right there. If I can get the angle just right, we are seeing it. That would probably be a details grade, an AU details grade on this one as uh, my suspicions were correct on this one. But it's not bad. I mean, these do clean up real good. So um, this is going to help you when you're buying anything in the raw, as, as a matter of fact. And, you know, and I'm trying to be as honest as possible with my inventory because I, I know what it is. Um, I have great uh, education on the coins themselves. And uh, I just feel like that the value of that, I'm not going to say it's higher now because I restored it. It's still going to go back in that bin. And somebody's going to think that's extremely attractive and they're going to buy it. But I didn't damage the coin whatsoever. So <clears throat> let's go to the peace dollar. The third coin. And that's what it looks like originally. Not too bad, right? Here's what it looks like now. Let's look for hairlines. And definitely it looks like it's been cleaned. Like the, the surface has been compromised. I definitely feel strong that it's an EF. Extremely fine coin. And some of that tape kind of wasn't too terminal. It actually... Looks a little better, as you can see. All right. But still, it's... Uh, oop, 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 oop. Where did I see it? There it is. There's your rubs. And that's what I was saying. We couldn't see that before, could we? When the residue was on there, it hides those hairlines. I just want you to be aware of that. I'm very aware of these things now. It's very critical. If you buy anything raw, that you need to examine it extremely close. <clears throat> When I'm talking about this film residue that's on these coins, it hides the hairlines. I just want you to know that. So now, did we increase the value of these coins? You guys let, know in the, let me know in the comments below. And uh, they are attractive. I know there's some dishonest sellers all over the place on the internet. And this is exactly what they would do to their coins to amplify and make them look more appealing. Now we're going to move on to a graded example and nice original mint state conditions. You can see the cartwheel going right through the coin. Very, very nice. And Kak believes this is going to be the high end of the grade. 
right? It does look fantastic. This could, you know, this looks like a lot of Men's State 64s I see. Um, I buy the holder too. I mean, because it's a rattler, they were kind of harsh on their grading back in the day from what we've heard. Um, I've seen some coins where they're just kind of, yeah, I would agree. Even today, today's standards, that would probably get a Men's State 65. You never know who, who your grader is going to be. Is he very uh, knowledgeable and very experienced or is it somebody they just hired about a year ago? You, you never know, right? But that's a fantastic coin for the grade, Men's State 63. Now, there are variations that you can have different marks in different areas, and there's, you know, the focal points, that cheek, it looks phenomenal, right? You can get Men's State 63s that do have a lot of chatter on them as well, even on today's standards. So let's move on to this. Start on that page. we got an eight-tail feather here. Um, obviously, the, uh, the coin's been compromised. Okay, it, the finish is not quite there. I would say that'd be like an AU details. You not you may not see any cleaning on there, but it's all about the luster, folks. Um, there you could definitely see the wear, but the uniformity of the luster is just too artificial looking. You know what I'm saying? Um, you still an AU coin would have a, a decent like 50% uh, luster cartwheel through it. Um, and a little bit of a contrast between um, the devices and the fields. We have this one. As you can see, this one's about the same grade, and it's not been messed with. You can definitely see the luster. See the luster bands going through it? This is a decent 55 grade here. And I'm just working it right there. That's a nice, nice an AU55 coin. Nice details and everything. Um, this coin, that definitely is a clean coin. You can look at the uh, sort of the hail, the cloudy areas between the star and her face. That will never go away. But still, um, people can try and change the lighting and make it go away. You know, fancy little photograph tricks like so. You know, they go like this. You can't see it, right? So um, definitely that's a unk details. So let's move on to the next one here. This one, again, possibly has some cleaning to it. You can see it on the field there. Um, has a little bit of reflectivity, but not even close to even call it a proof like or semi proof like. It's just basically like 20% 20, 20 proof like. So it's not quite there. Um, I'd call that about, let's see, uh, it'd be a 58 if it grades straight. And unfortunately, that would probably mark it down to an AU details, which is worth about an AU 50. This one right here is, let's see, let me see. That is a VG10. Okay. VG10, this is a 79cc. Um, a lot of people uh, try and sell them in the raw, and they'll try and say that's a VF. Not even close. Um, it's, it may pass as a fine 12, but I'm I'm much more conservative. I say VG10 on that coin. They're still trading for 350, 375 in that condition, problem free, because it does not look appear to be cleaned. Okay, um, 79.0. Let's see this one. That is, let's see. This is a tough one, folks. It's the luster. Um, I had to say my, that's more like an AU58. Okay. Um, this one has a little more reflectivity, but I still have to say that's going to be an AU58. You can see the cloudiness on it. The luster's been kind of, uh, this, there's too much rub on it. It may, it may actually get a 55 plus. But nowhere near um, an um, uncirculated coin. You can see the flatness in the hair. That's not where at all. But what you want to do is you want to look at the cap right there for a sh anomalous um, shining areas there for rub. But otherwise, yeah, it's uh, it's not worth putting that coin in a, in a holder. You'll you'll get burned on that. Um, 1880. That's a decent one. I'd say that's probably a mint state 62. Definitely. I mean, it does have some, you know, light abrasions all the way around it, chatter, whatever you want to call it. Um, this one right here, let's see, let me look at this thing. That one's probably a fine 15. All right. This one's decent. Um, strong XF. Well, let's get that glare out of there. Strong XF, possibly EU 50 on that one. Does have a dull luster, but if we try and bend the light a little bit, possibly there that needs some restoration. 
and if it doesn't turn out, it doesn't turn out. Some Sometimes this uh, residue or this toning is kind of terminal. All right, so this one's a beauty. Nice contrast. People think the contrast is uh, a proof like. No, it's it basically you, you take your finger, if you can see your finger in there, then that's kind of, it shows the mirrors. Um, there's a lot of contrast, which is really nice. We get the nice frosty feel, uh, the frosty devices in a nice mirrored field. But that's a fantastic piece. That's a nice Mint State 64 example right there. Um, and this one, 1881. This one is probably like a VF30, possibly an XF40. It's in that range. All right. Um, I want to show you a couple new pickups I picked up the other day. All right. So this is my second book here. Um, <clears throat> so we got this 1904 right here. As you can see, that's easy. An XF45. That is not even anywhere close to a Mint State 62 or 63. The luster is not there. There's wear everywhere. Um, it's dull, you know, but it still has a little bit of mint luster on there. Um, 1904 New Orleans, um, it is kind of a low mintage coin, but a lot of them survived, and that is a beautiful Mint State 64 example, and they're extremely common in Mint State 64. A lot of them got saved. Um, so the star of the show, we're going to talk about this one right here. As you can see, they're very, very close. Mint State 64, Mint State 64 plus, if that distracting mark on the cheek right there, I don't like that. Otherwise, you know, I'd be conservative and say a 63 to a 63 plus. Fantastic eye appeal on the coin. Okay, I love I love the surface. Let's rotate that. Let's rotate that baby. It's hard. This book is heavy too. Very very nice. Let's look at the back. The back is immaculate. Which one is it? This one. This one right here. That's it. It's just gorgeous. Gorgeous reverse, people. I love that coin. I love that coin. All right. So I'm very confident with my grade on that one. 63, 63 plus, somewhere in there. Um, and this one I just recently purchased. And it, when I see clear separation, I know that glare is driving me nuts. Go away. There we go. You see there's clear separation right there. This is my little trick. If you see clear separation there, you're pretty much going to be on the fine, the very fine 25 or higher so i'd be very confident that this would be a vf 25 i don't see any rub on the coin let's see the patina looks to be original for a coin in that condition there is some wear and a weekly strike of uh, struck uh breast feathers there and let's see i might see any rub here now nah, it looks Looks pretty legit. That's, that's, that was a good buy. So that's a Type 6S. Um, so that's, that, means, that just means it's a large S. So um, I'm just trying to help you guys. If you guys are buying coins in the raw, I just see it everywhere. And that's a fantastic example. 1921. Um, let's see that thing. You know, the lusters aren't the greatest on the 21s. Um, you can get some proof-like ones, and they're extremely extremely rare and they're worth like literally a mint state 63 of this is like what 40 bucks but if it's proof like the gray sheet's like four and a quarter it's crazy how much it jumps but yeah that's a you know the cheek looks nice i don't see a bunch of chatter on this one i would definitely be confident let's see ooh, 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 ooh. i'm looking at the cap here is that shiny? You know, it could be a 58. Yeah. And that's why I won't grade it. You know, because it, it just, the cheek will fool you. But I look at that, that cap right there. I see it could possibly be wear. That's the highest point of the coin. And these, and these parts of the hair are the highest points. So if you're going to get, say, you think that right above the brow right there is rub, well, that's not the highest point of the coin. If you see a rub area, that means possibly the coin's been doctored. And you want to make sure you're looking at the uniformity. Or, I'm sorry. What's the wrong coin? Um, it has an anomaly spot here. Could be from some tape residue. Yeah, it definitely looks like tape residue. That would come off with acetone. Um, we see any rub on here. Looks, looks problem-free. 
but I'm gonna call this a, a 58 grade just to be on the safe side. Hey buddy, I hope I did a good job and I hope I taught you guys something about buying coins in the raw, especially the silver dollars. Um, what can be done to some of these coins? Can you find a treasure in a coal pile? Absolutely you can. Um, Cause you know, sometimes that film can remove um, that, you know, gunky, dull looking color to it. And underneath it could be a gem. And sometimes it's not. And I'm just trying to make you aware that sometimes you remove that, you're going to realize that it's been cleaned. It has hairlines on it. And some of this stuff's just terminal. It's just never going to go away and it will deter buyers. Um, and also be aware of which coins you should restore and which coins you should not and just leave them alone. Um, in this case, you know, these coins, it doesn't hurt the value of them. They're priced down so incredibly cheap you know somebody's gonna it will appeal to someone and they'll be gone but i need to let you guys know that i did that and i'm honest i'll be like those two coins i dipped them to see what would happen and that's exactly what i would say and they would probably just like it and, and buy it anyways so again you know the morgan dollars have various grades everywhere and it's it's just becoming second nature they're one of the easiest coins to grade in my opinion and and, and understanding the luster uh, has the coin been dipped has it been rubbed as it you know to make it a details grade um the dance on the uh the rim uh, the rim's nice you know what i'm saying you gotta look for those things there's three sides to every coin all right um and knowing um what things are terminal and they'll never come off to improve it things that you just need to know and i'm trying to help you guys if you see like tape residue and it's kind of looks like glue that can be removed with this acetone and it will not hurt that coin whatsoever you can just put it in a bowl and just let it uh dissolve and it'll come right off you don't need to rub it or anything and it'll evaporate like that um so again i know what i'm talking about with coins and morgan dollars especially and more in a uh, piece dollars that uh the grades are pretty consistent and uh, i've been right on the money a lot so and I'll show you the guys that because I have literally three uh, unboxings coming from Anax. I know you guys probably, some of you guys might not care about Anax and some think go for it. You know, it's just, it's just a personal choice that I have just because in the realm that I'm in, everything's got to be down to about gray sheet to sell. You know what I'm saying? So it's like if something scores really good, I just use Anax as a filter and I'll just, I can cross it over to PCGS if I ever find something that's worth doing that. So um, again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Smash that like button. I really appreciate that. And tell your friends because yeah, I'm trying hard to have some great videos for you guys and uh, keep you guys posted on our numismatic uh, collecting. So uh, click on some of these videos on the right side of your screen. I really appreciate that. And click that bell so you know when my next video comes out. Thank you.